This time we are returning to Dark Horse Comics with our first mini series, well, sort of series of one shots for Boba Fett Death, Lies, and Treachery. I swear I didn't deliberately plan to do this episode to even remotely coincide with The Mandalorian. Well, these three issues have probably our second big name comic writer taking on the Star Wars universe. Not much big name in the United States, but big name in the UK. Very big name in the UK. Previously, we've had Louise Simonson, uh, creator of Apocalypse, who uh, co-creator of um, the Power Pack and numerous other um, excellent works at Marvel, having written the River of Chaos miniseries with basically the, the entire creative team of um, the initial Power Pack run, and but this time, we have John Wagner on writing duties with Cam Kennedy on art. We've discussed Kennedy on before, but Wagner is new to Star Wars. But again, definitely not new to comics. John Wagner is, frankly, the closest word we've gotten on, on the Dark Horse Star Wars books to a Roy Thomas-level figure. Because what John Wagner is the creator of Strontium Dog and Judge Dredd. Oh, and he'd also go on to write the graphic novel for A History of Violence, which would later become an Academy, Academy Award-nominated motion picture, but also he wrote and still writes Judge Dredd for 2000 AD. Um, and he's been doing it for decades. Like, this is a Stan Lee on Fantastic Four level longe longevity with the writing. After the events at Empire's End, Boba Fett ends up working on retainer for another hut gangster, Gorga the Hut. Gorga has been feuding with yet another hut gangster, Orko, but is in love with Orko's daughter, setting up this series of three more or less one-shot adventures, which each lead into the other. First, in Bounty on Barcuda, in order to get Orko's approver, approval to marry his daughter, Gorga asks Fett to kill a space pirate named Barkuda, who's been a thorn in Orko's side. And to do so, Fett will need the assistance of a reluctant stage musician, who, who also has a bounty on his head, and, well, but who also is very much liked, his magical, magic shows are very much liked by Barkuda. In Where the Fat Lady Swings, Orko has granted Gorga his approval to marry his daughter, Anacro. However, when Anacro is kidnapped by another group of gangsters and local law enforcement refuses to raise a finger, Fed is brought in to get her back. Meanwhile, Barkuda's brother, Raikuda, is outgunning for Fett in revenge. In the final issue of the trilogy, Murder Most Foul, Gorga has had quite enough with Orko and sends Fett to kill his father-in-law. On the down low, he doesn't want his um, wife to know. However, when Gorga learns that Anacro's pregnancy is not quite stable, he tries to call off the hit before Fett can carry it out. However, 
Raikuda is not quite dead after the events of the last I issue, and still wants his revenge against Fett, and is willing to expand the scope to uh, Gorga as well. The planet of Skibo has a major problem with kidnappings, and local law enforcement is in league with the kidnappers. We meet our first two Herglicks. We've seen a couple in the background in Dark Empire, but they've never gotten names. Uh, Barkuda and Raikuda. Boba Fett is still bounty hunting after his escape from the Sarlacc and his appearances in the Dark Empire series, and he's still working for the Huts, at least for now. Gorga the Hut, well, he's a Hut, he's a gangster, and by the end of the series, he's married with children. Wagner does a workmanlike job of writing Fett. He doesn't write Fett like Dread. He doesn't have Dread's rigid sense of duty or rigid devotion to the law. He writes him as sort of a man with no name sense of mystery, and generally that works. Wagner also, in the work, injects the sort of sense of um, satire, I guess is the correct term, that you got with, with Judge Dredd, where you have lots of characters with very punny names. Like, for example, um, Barcuda, um, the... Assi the assistant to one of the Hut gangsters being named, who's furry, being named Her uh, Suit. That sort of thing. Um, it's very descriptive nomenclature kind of thing, played clearly for humor. That said, there's no getting around this. Cam Kennedy's art, with its limited color palette, is very much in full effect and hurts these books a lot. We like we occasionally get some warmer earth color earth tones in some interior scenes, but like by the end of the book, everything's in his in these sorts of sea greens and navy blues that we saw to a certain degree of effect in Dark Empire and that related series. It, and Kennedy's glaucoma was in full effect. Well, and already he was already experiencing that at, that at this point. So it his pencils are fine. His line work is fine. Um it's it's the colors. It's the coloring. Um I really, really wish that someone at Dark Horse, or even if Wagner himself had gone to Cam and said, Hey, listen. Your line work, your pencils, your inks are perfect. They're, they're wonderful. Your over your glaucoma is impacting your coloring we would like you to consider having somebody else be your colorist we have some recommendations but it's your decision maybe they did do this maybe they did say hey have you considered doing a colorist and using a colorist and cam kennedy says said either Nah, I'm fine. I'm good. I, I, I got it. I got this. Or e either because he, he didn't quite realize just how far his, his, his colors had gone, or out of pride or something else, or if some just the staff at Dark Horse had said, no, his contract is he, he colors his own stuff always. I don't know. Um... By the end of the book, it's just that Kennedy's various shades of sea green and navy blue, as I mentioned earlier, just don't complement the work. And like to the point where if this was just a black and white book, like Dread was, like lots of Judge Dread was in 2000 AD, that would have been fine. That would have been just fine. So next time, we are sticking with the comics and going back to Rogue Squadron with the Phantom Affair. We'll see you then. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the show, please like and subscribe. I also consider backing my Patreon. Patreon backers get episodes up to one week early, 
of this show and any f future Let's Plays. Also, please consider packing my coffee. Uh, toss me a few bucks, also helps support the show, and it's not a monthly obligation or anything like that.